Hi guys and welcome to my review and this time a full review of the Lechor Giz Audio Galileo. Uh, I want to first of all thank HiFiGo and secondly I want to congratulate uh, Giz Audio, Timmy, uh, for his first collab and, and what a collab straight away with Lechor so uh, he didn't go and collaborate with a, a small brand so I think that in itself oh, you know, is worth its, its merit. And uh, also uh, say that uh, I, I can understand a lot of what he tried to do in this IEM and, and when I now I, I go forward with the review, you will understand what I'm saying. Anyway, this is the box. It comes in a simple box, which is the usual lecture thing. Inside that you open, open it up, plenty of uh, you know paperwork as usual again, a little uh, manual, instru you know, instruction manual and then um, Inside there, there's a case which I'll show to you in a second. There is these um, these tips, these uh, black top tips. Okay, let's put it that way. Let's just put this out of the way here. Okay, and then inside of the box, which is this very very unique and very different case, which has just one small detail, which is this this latch. I mean, you close this thing and it stays closed and. For me, the way I found to, to be able to open it is I, I hold it tight, I close it tight, and then I can unlock the, the you know, the, the, the locking mechanism, which is goes across the whole thing here. So when it's locked, it's locked. I mean, if I don't press it, if I'm just holding it and I'm trying to open it up, it doesn't open. If I press it, it kind of relaxes a little bit the, 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 the connection there, the locking system there, and then I can open it up. Anyway, inside came the cable and another set of tips, which are the more usual tips from Lecture, and a cleaning tool. So cable, the more usual white tips from Lechure, and the actual uh, cable came inside there. Okay, so that's my, let's say, uh, little remark with regards to the accessories. It's this case, although very nice, this this mix of uh, uh, kind of an aluminum faceplate and it's plastic, although this plastic, uh, this rubberized plastic wool with time kind of uh, weather and, and, and start looking not as nice, but anyway, it is what it is. It's a nice case It's different from what you usually see so kudos to them and then The cable that also came inside there very very nice cable, uh, but but one little small detail as well The ear hook angle yeah is very very tight So I'm actually gonna end up having to remove the sleeve yeah Which does this hook so that the cable can be used effectively because it's 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 really too tight so perhaps a little bit of attention to detail there when the cable is being made two pin connection the IEMs itself very nice shell resin shell you can just barely make out the driver inside the, the well the two drivers the 10 millimeter uh, silicone aluminum uh, magnesium alloy apparently uh, um, diaphragm and then the Sonian 2389 uh, BA from what I was able to ascertain, there's no real um, major crossover inside, uh, just um, uh, tuning um, filters, uh, one on the on the side of the DD driver and, and then two on the side of the BA. So it seems that both drivers are working in full range, uh, just limited in their frequency by those uh, then uh, filters, okay, which are very common to use, especially with BAs. So physically, there doesn't seem to be any major... Um, uh, any complicated crossover network inside here. Yeah. I mean, I've seen uh, uh, the, the, uh, the um, uh, video that HiFi did on the actual uh, opening up of it, and well, uh, I, I didn't really see anything that is of any, um, you know, differentiating, uh, anything that's different from what we usually see. There, there's no crossover network, let's put it that way, as you see, for example, in the full Performer 5. So they've done, thing in a, they've done everything in a more, um, let's call it, mechanical way, okay? Anyway, uh, the drivers themselves, the, the earphones themselves, fit beautifully, my ears, no issues there. I'm using the medium-sized uh, tips, which allow for a nice deep fit. Um, isolation is perfect. Um, Nothing really, honestly. In terms of its looks, beautiful shell, beautiful faceplate. Look at that, beautiful faceplate. Shell size, uh, the fit, everything there. Top marks. They did their homework. The cable itself is fine, apart from that little small, uh, you know, angle of the ear hook. And again, the case and the rest of the accessories all fine. For an asking price of one hundred and ten dollars. I think it's actually quite impressive that they were able to offer a cable of this quality and a case of that quality, even though they have these little small details, which I'm sure are easily to easy to, to resolve. So 
in terms of its price point i think it's perfect considering again that you have these high quality this high quality dd driver and a sony 20 2389 ba driver which is a, a ba driver that you usually see in much more expensive sets so part selection hardware wise top marks for the galileo well done what about the sound well the sound in a nutshell is a safe sound and i can understand why uh timmy why gears audio why let's show went down that way they wanted to make a sound that would be pleasing for a large variety of people that would satisfy a large group of people without having uh without running the risk of being maybe too bold in one area or another and that uh, could then dictate a uh, decreasing in, 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 in and ultimately in sales and popularity so uh, there's nothing wrong with that obviously then that kind of uh, makes it feel like it's just another IM in terms of its sound and that that is to that is correct to a certain point but incorrect to another and I'll I'll explain further I have selected these three IEMs here for uh, very uh, very um, uh, specific reasons uh, and, and 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 the main reason was when I uh, started listening to the Galileo and and the more I listened to the Galileo uh, immediately I started you know coming to my mind well this sounds like mm, this sounds like like that and those IEMs that immediately came to to mind were what well the Dunokima uh, the Dunokima sorry um, the HD sound heart mirror pro and believe it or not the tension zero uh, these two priced well the Kima priced at about a hundred dollars so similar to the Galileo the heart mirror pro at around 75 to 80 dollars and the zero at 20 well under 20 dollars about 15 dollars so a big these two closer to the galileo this one a big difference but the truth is this in my ears to my music to what i listen to these three sounded very similar to the galileo let me break that down for you base of the galileo is very nice um i i i, I have no issues with hearing what other um, reviewers say actually i like hearing what other reviewers say because it can help me to a certain extent uh, confirm or not confirm what i myself think and i don't think it's any there's anything wrong with that with doing that um, and and to, and to that extent i was actually quite surprised with a, a specific review which i'm not going to name but that didn't know who Giz audio was didn't know who timmy was and went on with a certain kind of uh, playfulness with regards to his name that I just found it very distasteful, especially when it comes from a person like him that's been around for a while. I think it's this just tasteful. I don't think it's something that's necessary to play around with his name. But anyway, that's me. That's, you know, whatever. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, I listened to what some other reviewers that have, have gotten the opportunity to review the Galileo said. I listened to, uh, I listened, I've been listening to Galileo myself for the whole weekend now. And obviously, I came up with my own idea. I find the bass on the Galileo to be perfect. It absolutely satisfies my music uh, library amply. There's nothing there that it doesn't do properly. <coughs> and that doesn't mean by any means that it's a bass monster. No, it's not a bass monster. But it does everything that I like listening to well. And that, for me, is good enough. And what do I mean by that? It means that, for example, if I listen to Control You from Movement, it sounds perfect. If I listen to The Ladies Not Amused from Jeff Cascaro, the, the kick drums has got more than enough energy. If I listen to, for example, um, Riviera from Bob's Up uh, Remix, perfect. Again, more than enough energy in the, in the mid-bass and, and in the sub bass. Very well done. But even with simpler stuff like, um, uh, or, or, or let's say, not um, focused on the more EDM style of music, but if I go for Chemistry of Love from, from Michael Franks, or if I go for House of Groove by Eugene Groove, the bass on the Galileo is spot on. Um, mids. Uh, the mids are, they are safe. Uh, the, 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 the thing that gets you about the mids is not uh, something which you pick up very easily or you pick up very quickly you pick it up when you start really listening to music which is more complex and music that uh, um, and for, and actually one of the first musics that i actually picked up on it uh was a, a song called 1001 nights from raja okay, this is kind of a, a cafe de anatolia kind of uh, ibiza uh, kind of sound um, it's an EDM song, but it's got a lot of uh, ethnic uh, vocals in it and everything. And there is where you pick up on what I think is 
a flaw for me, not a major flaw, but a minor flaw that the Galileo has. It lacks that ability to give this energy to the voices and to the instruments at around, you know, that area there between 1 and 4K. It just, there's something there that just doesn't come across the way that, for example, it comes across in the Dima, or in the Kima, sorry, or in the, in the Heart Mirror Pro, or even in the Zero. And mind you, when I reviewed the Kima, I said the Kima was an IEM that did nothing wrong and did nothing spectacular. It was a safe IEM. Okay? The same thing with the Heart Mirror Pro. The Heart Mirror Pro is an IEM that follows a more um, conventional tune that's being used now lately, but it does nothing wrong, nothing, nothing uh, spectacular, uh, sp spectacular either. You know, uh, Probably the one that, out of these three that stands out the most because you just are not expecting it, especially at this price, is the Zero. The Zero is... Very surprising because if you look at the graph and you see the bass, you think, okay, this is going to be bass thin. And there's nothing bass thin about it. Yes, it doesn't have the same bass as the Galileo, as the Heart Mirror Pro, as the Kima, but it's got amazing bass, amazing bass. The problem with the Zero is just one, fit. If you can get it to fit properly, you will be blown away by how good it is. If you can't get it to fit properly, you won't never see or won't never hear its magic. That's the problem with the Zero. So, going back to the mids. There is where you pick it up. And then when you start listening to things like 99 from Thorson Goods, uh, when you listen to, for example, uh, let me see um, another one which is um, a favorite of mine, Euphoria from Jeff Bradshaw, there is where you start picking up on that uh, lack of a certain amount of energy there, uh, which then coupled to the fact that Chevel is very safe. I mean... The treble in here is very much like the treble of the melee, and the melee, uh, for me, its its issue wasn't the bass, its issue wasn't the treble, uh, sorry, the mids, its issue was the lack of just that little extra, just that little bit extra treble that would give it that air, that 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 um, that sense of space that it this just doesn't have, and yet you have it in the Heart Metal Pro, you have it in the Kima, you even have it in the Zero. That's the only thing, well, the two only things that I can really point as not negatives, but as things that were done, I believe, on purpose, on the Galileo, to make it a safe tune and to make a tune that is likable, which is, and I'll repeat, the, the treble is very laid back, so this is not an IM for treble hits. Treble is, is well done, it's got more than enough uh, detailed retrieval uh, to, to, you know, to make it, to, to get the, the positive mark, but it's not a, an IM which can be as ultimately detailed as a Heart Mirror Pro, or as the Kima, uh, and I believe that that was done uh, so that the BA would be unperceivable as being a BAD, because the marriage of the two drivers, I believe, has been quite well obtained, especially with such a simple manner of doing it. It's been quite well done. So in that aspect, that's done. The mids, again, the marriage, I repeat, the marriage between the bass and the mids has been well done, but the mids can sometimes, be, and this is because I believe uh, a lot of the mid information is actually coming from the 2389 as opposed to the to the dynamic driver could be wrong but that's my perception uh, they lack that certain little bit of extra energy that you get on for example the heart mirror and on the Kima again I will repeat that's not a bad thing it's a safe way of doing things that just makes just guarantees that more people will be liking it Again, it's something that can easily be uh, uh, corrected if you do a little bit of equalizing. I sometimes do, sometimes don't. don't. Most of the times I don't. I just like to hear things as they are. Uh, and, and that's it. I mean, for example, if I hear Hello Again from Paul Brown, um, it's, it's a very nice song. It's got this very nice guitar going on, very mellow, um, and it plays it exquisitely well. And, you know, it, there's, it, it doesn't do it bad or in any way. But... You just notice on certain passages of the guitar, on the heart mirror, there's just that little bit extra energy which just makes it more fulfilling. On the Kima as well, the same thing. On the Zero, again, that same thing. And I guess, you know, you could say, oh, but won't that maybe make it then, uh, won't make it those IMs be more fatiguing? Maybe, maybe, ultimately it will be more fatiguing. It will be very much dependent on you and what you like listening to. And that's the reality here. If you like listening to high energy or you want a, a high energy presentation, this is not for you. If you are a treble head, this is not for you. If, on the other hand, you are a person that likes to stick an IM in his ears and listen to music for hours and hours and hours, this is the one. 
perfect, it does that perfectly. And again, I repeat, I am sure that that was the whole intention of, of Timmy, of this audio and of lecture, make an IEM which is going to be sounding safe. Going back, uh, or to finalize the, the in terms of its uh, technicalities and, and tone and tonality and so on, how does, uh, how does this um, uh, match up? Well, soundstage and imaging are, I guess, acceptable for the price. Um, soundstage is acceptably, acceptably it's, it's got good depth, uh, acceptable height, acceptable width. Um, imaging, again, acceptable. Uh, it's n I th because of the way that the triple is very laid back. It's not um, uh, something which you will uh, very easily. Uh, if the passage is more complicated, very easily position things. You can position them in a rough manner, okay, where the instruments are and so on. But if the passage starts having more instruments, you might have some difficulty in pinpointing everything. But th this is me nitpicking, and this is me now being under ideal conditions and everything. I mean, this you know, if you're listening to this on the metro, please, people. Uh, don't come and tell me that you can pick up on... That's nonsense. I mean, I, I know with all due respect, I, when, when certain people tell me that in the middle of a metro with noise going on and so on and so forth, they want to be able to pick up the, the, the third violin on the fourth row. <laughs> come on, please. You know, no, forget it. That doesn't happen. So, technicalities in that aspect are acceptable. A tone and tonality, very nice. Tone and tonality, I will give it a, I will give it a positive, uh, a more positive uh, 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 punctuation. Um... And detail retrieval, as I said, just as well acceptable. Could be a little. There could be more detail retrieval, but the the fact that the 2389 was kind of held back, reined back in terms of its energy, I guess, is the reason why there isn't more detail retrieval. There isn't more ability to micro nuance and macro nuance as well as you would ex as well or or what you would expect maybe. Anyway, guys, um, as I said, nice, safe. Tuned I am, I mean, well done for first collab. And um, I see, I see, or I foresee a, a an improvement that could be based on this, perhaps a one plus three, or one plus two, um, or with the same basis of this uh, dynamic driver, uh, with the twenty three eighty nine doing what it what it is doing, and then just adding that third BA driver or that second BA driver to give it a little bit more extension. I see that as, as a possible upgrade because the basis is very good. Honestly, the basis is very, very good. I enjoyed it, I liked it. It's it's well done, well executed. Um, compared to the Kima, to the Art Mirror Pro and to the, to the uh, Zero, it's not a question of uh, it's better or it's superior. It's just, um, although, and I'll show now in a second, although the graphs are very similar, um, the fact that you have a single DD on these, yeah, doing everything, conveys a different, um, uh, a different dynamics to the way it, it present. They present themselves as opposed to to the Kima, and uh, to the Kima. Sorry, to the to the Galileo. And uh, again, I repeat myself. I know I'm, I'm sounding like a little bit of a broken record, but it's very obvious that what was the main idea here was to make this sound safe. And in that aspect, it's been done very well. It's been very well executed. I, I am sure that the majority of people won't even pick up on a lot of the things that I mentioned, I'm sure. Um, not, not that they're not capable, but just because in normal circumstances you won't be able to, to pick up on them. I picked up on them because I was listening to it, you know, in a more quiet environment and, and using, uh, uh, you know, gear that kind of allows me to, to get the best out of, of what the Galileo has to offer. Uh, in terms of uh, touching on the, up on the issue of the gear, in terms of uh, how easy it is to power, it's actually quite an easy uh, um, IEM to power. Uh, I used it with my usual uh, Frankenstein, and the, the Shio and, and um, NX7 combination works beautifully. I use it with the new Q11 as well, amazing. Very, it, uh, actually, um, to counteract perhaps a little bit of that closed down or that more mellow presentation that it has on the upper mids and treble, uh, a more brighter, t uh, a more brighter sounding, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, power source would be uh, would perhaps be a good choice. Uh, to that aspect, for example, I used it briefly with the TK2, and the TK2 on here, um, uh, it, it has that very clinical sound that uh, that, uh, that that is typical of the ESS um, um, implementations, and on here it sounded very very nice i have to admit that on the, the tk2 with this is a very nice match anyway guys that's it for the 
let's say the main part of the review i'll show you now the graphs and uh, as always like and subscribe if you have any questions please feel free to ask all right you take care see you now hi guys and uh welcome now to the graph section of the uh lecture uh gizardio galileo uh, and this is the curve that i got with my particular galileo so a nice sub base um uh, you know energy flowing very very nicely into the mid base uh, it's almost flat by 200 hertz so really this part here this flow of and the way that this uh, sub base and base was done is flawless nice flat starts dipping again at one rises up to almost uh, like almost dk you can say and then plateaus nicely just a little bit of a 1 db rise there and then falls off um so that's uh, the galileo uh, you can automatically see that in terms of that 3D-ness, it doesn't have much of that. It's going to be a little bit more on the closed down side. Uh, and, well, it is what it is. Anyway, let's compare then with the, with the other IMs that I mentioned. The comparison, the first comparison is with the Duno uh, Kima. Uh, and yes, you do see that the Galileo has got, uh, you listen to it and you, you do feel that it's got more uh, more energy in the, in the, in the base and in the, in the sub-base. But it's not a dramatic difference, but it's noticeable. On the other hand, you then notice that the Kime has got a little bit more energy uh, in that transition from the mids to the upper mids, and in the uh, you know the, 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 that that ability to do 3D or to the you know the upper treble up top there, the brilliance area. You can you can notice above 10k. There's a little bit more energy on on the Duno. Okay, that's the Duno out of the way. The HD Sound Hot Mirror Pro, as you can see, it graphs very very similar very very similar uh, the bass sounds the same honestly uh, the the way that it goes uh, the, 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 you know the pin again and so on and so forth the same thing where then you see a, a big difference is in the 3d effect that the, the pro is capable of doing uh, i'm actually using it here with the clarion pro tips which i used as well on on the galileo and they really didn't do much but on the the, the hard mirror pro it, it works they work beautifully uh, so white bore Definitely is, is, is a, a way to go on the Art Mirror Pro. As you can see, plenty of 3D, that, that detailed, everything. I mean, the Art Mirror Pro is very much what the Heart Mirror was, just that it has bass, oh, well, a lot more bass. And not that the Heart Mirror, the, the original one, was lacking, but uh, it, you know, it is what it is. And then finally, here with the uh, Tanscium Zero, which was, uh, again, a surprise. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, yes, there is differences here in the bass. There's a little bit more of a of a, of a mid bass presence. Let's put it that way on the on the zero. But then this uh, added energy here, uh, which again the same way that you might think this is too thin and that might be too energetic. No, it actually isn't. They actually complement each other very nicely, uh, and the zero actually sounds very very capable. Nice three D presentation on the zero. Uh, okay, fine, fair enough. Uh, it isn't as polished as uh, the, the, the the Galileo is. Ultimately, no, it's not. Uh, well, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's. I mean, a fifteen a fifteen dollar IEM. You know, uh, if you look at what is being used there, I'm sure the driver isn't of the same quality. But taking into account what it costs, it is really good. It it does it does uh, it it does wonders for what it costs. Um, Ultimately, uh, yes, the, the Galileo, like I said, does come out on top on, on the quality of the bass being more polished, uh, the quality of the mids being more polished, uh, although less energetic, although less present, uh, and the, the, the tonality and the tone of, of the Galileo also comes out uh, ahead of the, of, the, of the zero. But again, let me reiterate, the zero is $15, and just the simple fact that it actually is able to to trade blows with the Galileo is, uh, you know, an IM which costs eight times more, roughly. Uh, I think it's it's it it uh, deserves its merit. That's it, guys. Uh, Galileo, um, nice first uh, collaboration. Uh, everything maintained within a nice window there of around eight dB, so perfectly done. Really, nothing that can be faulted, honestly. Um, Let's hope and let's see that the next one, uh, what, what the next one brings. I think honestly that if 
this area was just slightly improved and then maybe the addition of a crossover to make this uh, section of the sound uh, come alive in perhaps just a little different manner um, will make for a very very capable one plus two i i believe and maybe something that won't cost a lot more than what the, the galileo costs and and you know uh, could be a uh, could be a serious contender in the in the hybrids of under 200 dollars that's it guys that's all i've got for you hope you enjoyed it any questions please as always feel free to ask and i'll do my best to answer as quickly as possible Thank you. Take care.